You need to have newspaper spread out on your table everywhere because the littlest bit of dye can get on his painting and his shirt and her shirt and everything, okay? So have it all over. I have a board when I'm dyeing my fabric and I have newspaper and I have fabric, okay? That's kind of the order. You can do more newspaper under there if you want to. It might not be a bad idea, okay? This is just the newspaper that was already under my waxy fabric. All right, so I've got my colors that I knew I needed and I did primary. So I grabbed, y'all be very careful with these jars and make sure they're closed when you're walking with them. I did them all kind of quickly on Friday and I tried to make sure they were closed. I've got blue, I've got red, I've got golden yellow, and I've got lemon yellow. Javaris, can you grab that color chart back there, please? That little fabric you want to bring it over here? Thank you. You should have had it by me. All right, so I've got these four. It's that big fabric thing on the board. Yeah, there you go. You can bring the whole thing. Thank you. While he's bringing that, I've got my water bowl, just like I do for painting. Thank you. So you can see on here, this kind of shows you the different colors and it shows you what they look like watered down. So I've got red and then when I water it down, it gets it kind of like a reddish pink. It looks a lot prettier than this because this is some old, this is like an old color chart. You got orange, it turns lighter. The golden yellow and the lemon yellow, you can see how they're a little different. Um, I'm going to use both because when I lighten it, golden yellow, it gets a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to use it for my primary, both of them. And then you've got these options. Our blue this time should be a little different than this blue jean blue. It should be a little more turquoisey because we ordered a new color. Um, and then there's no black. So you can see those. I put that there because at one point we did have black. So I just wanted you to get to see that. I keep it out. I got this dye from over on that cart right over there. The warm colors are all on the top and the cool colors are all right below. That's just how I kept them separate so they're easy for people. When you get your colors, you don't have to grab a whole pan or anything because they're separated by colors. You can go just grab the colors you need, okay? So you grab your own blue, your own yellow, your own red, and so on, okay? I've got some brushes and I put these kinds at that green sink right there just on the corner so that they don't really get too confused with the wax brushes, okay? Um, and you can use your own paint brushes to do batik. The dye is not going to ruin your own paint brush, okay? I just grab different ones um, because I needed different sizes, okay? Just make sure they're very clean before you ever start on this. Do we paint on this? No, we'd use dye, okay? So make sure you're using dye, alrighty? So I have got these little baby food jars. These can be your little mixing jars in case you have like a red violet or a blue green or something. Who has an intermediate color that's gonna be dyeing colors today? What colors do you have? Red violet. Red violet, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mix that for you. You wanna grab me a violet from over there? I'll mix that for you. I didn't think, cause I'm actually not mixing any of my colors. So when you're getting ready to mix your two colors, thank you, Madison. This is where you're gonna to need to be very careful, okay? If it makes you feel better to go do this over the sink, you can go do that too. But I'm gonna just pour a little bit. I don't need a ton. Probably like that amount to start. That's why we have so much newspaper. And one thing you make sure you never do, and we did it just a second ago, but you didn't know. And I didn't think about it until we were just doing it. We never reach dye over someone else's fabric, but that's okay, we were both doing it. We'll just remember not to next time. So I've got red. I'm going to put some violet in here. And that's all you got to do to mix your color. You can start around a little bit, but it should be pretty good. Okay. So that should be a nice red violet. You can test it on your paper too. If you want to kind of mix it up and just kind of see. I think that's pretty. That does feel like a red violet. Okay. So that'd probably be a pretty good color to use. And I can rinse off my brush right in there okay and I always have my paper towel so that's how you can do that another way that you can mix your dyes is you can just pour them into a little jar of water to dilute them we'll see how that kind of changed it I'll do it where everybody can see a little better so that's a little bit lighter if I wanted to get this lighter how could I do that 
Just add more water. Go to the sink, pour a little bit more water in there. Mm -hmm. I always just start with a little bit. It'll also help you too if you do dye than water. Kind of like your cereal before your milk. It kind of works a little better. Okay, so I'm going to start wax, or excuse me, dyeing, dyeing my fabric. Um, I've got my sketch, so I can kind of think where I'm at. I'm going to go light to dark, and I'm going to do small areas first. So I think I'm going to do maybe like some yellows first, since that's my lightest color. I'm used to wearing my apron all the way on top, and then I just wiped my hands. Okay, this thing's got so much junk on it. Um... I can use some lemon. I think that'll work well. I always keep my jar on the table when I'm painting. I don't keep it in my hand because it's just inevitable. Somebody's going to knock into you and you're going to get it all over your fabric. So I'm kind of paying attention. And that wax should resist all the dye. So you can kind of see if I paint onto that wax. You can't even see it, right? I wouldn't do it on purpose because then it's just like beaded up dye sitting there. And it could just roll off or kind of smear off. So I'm doing small things first. Kind of paying attention to my design. And you can kind of even see there when my wax kind of closed up too much, it was hard for me to get those colors in. Just do the best you can. And I kind of get a little bit on my brush and I kind of like, I kind of like scrub it a little bit into the fabric just to make sure it gets in there pretty good. And that's all I have to do, really. I try to do every color that I see that is this color. So, I know, like, it'll be this one and this one. You probably want to make sure you're changing your water very frequently with your dye because look what's happening. It's like I'm making new dye over here in my water bowl, right? It's just getting water down. So, especially if you're doing colors that are, like, different, like I'm going to be using blue and uh, red and I don't want to make purple because I don't have purple on here And then I would keep going and keep going so probably for the rest of today what I would do I would try to get all my little shapes done I'd probably try to do all of them because I think I can keep them pretty clean and then I'm going to wait until tomorrow to do my background because what I'll show you tomorrow is when you come back and your batik is dry and you have all the it's just a dry piece of fabric we're gonna wax over all these little spots to protect them so that when you do the background, it's not smearing all into your shapes, okay? This is gonna go on the drying rack. This, start, this part starts to get a little crazy when everybody's trying to go out to the drying rack with their batiks. So before you even go out there, 